Welcome to From Field to Stream TV. As you can see here beside me, we're just back in from a tremendous goose flight. The weather's absolutely incredible out there. Screaming gales, but perfect for the job. And in this week's programme, I'm going to take you to visit a Londoner who's a vegetarian. He makes guns and doesn't shoot. I hope you enjoy the programme. So Mark, you've brought me into your workshop. I have, I'm going to start off in a minute. <laughs> I know, I know. And what a I fantastic place this is. It reminds me of when I was at school with all yeah. these wonderful old pieces of kit. Uh, tell me a little bit about your job. You, you make guns. I do. Um, but basically, I uh, people from companies in England yeah. send, send me parts up to here, and which I assemble. Um, I do all the metal work parts for the gun, so mm -hmm. um, I'm what's termed as an actioner. So I do okay. part of it. They start off, you have the, the, the guns are made in, as the, like the barrel maker makes the tubes up into a pair of barrels. Okay. Then they come to me, I machine them up, fit them to the action, and all the parts that they send me up, I assemble yes. and shape it up so that it's shaped up like a gun and mm -hmm. it's ready for proof. Then it goes back to the company, whoever it may be, and uh, then they have a guy put a stock on it. Right. Um, and then it goes to an engraver, and it, it's engraved, and then it's finished. And the finisher, but once the action's hardened, he regulates everything, mm -hmm. polishes all the wood, yeah. and does the final assembly and makes it into, you know, the, like the finished article. Okay, okay. Um, so, yeah. so you basically, you, you've got your tubes come up. Yeah. And do you get an action come up, or do I you do. get a lump of steel? No, I get an action machining come up. Okay, and right. then I fit the barrels to that. Mm -hmm. All the working parts, I I fit the, those to the action. Yeah, get them all working together, mm. um, and then I shape it up so so that it looks like a gun. Yeah, because as yeah. it is, it is like the the. Um, the outside of the, of the machining is still like a block. Yes, and, yes. And so I have to actually file it, or hammer and mm. chisel and file until it is the shape that it needs yeah. to be. And <clears throat> I believe you also make some rifles. I do. I, well, every now and again, I don't make too yeah. many, but, you know, I do. I do. Um, so I make falling block rifles mm -hmm. um, and the odd bolt action rifle and double rifles as well. Okay. So my... But, yeah. What is this? This is um, an OU action forging. Okay. And this is what uh, um, some of the London over and unders, they start off like this. Mm -hmm. um, they use a forging because it the grain structure is still, rather than being straight, mm -hmm. has been altered to flow with the shape of the actual um, forging as it is. Um, this this strengthens the actual steel yeah. that you start off with, mm -hmm. um, and also they use forging because it reduces the amount of steel that you have to machine off. Right, I've got you. And this, and, is, and, you, and this is what you start with. Uh, no, I don't start with one of these. No, right. I start I, I start with a uh, a machined. Right. Like this after it's been machined up. Okay, I've got a tiny one. Oh, actually, I've got that. Anyway. This is basically this is that's sort of a, what what I would start off with. All right. Okay. This this, this is um, a three seventy five OU double rifle. That's a, that's going to be a beast. That is going to be a beast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So, so we've so we've got this piece that's going to get milled out and filed down. Yeah. Okay. And. This is a lock. A lock. This okay. Is a lock, lock plate. These have all, all the um, effectively part of the gun that makes the. It's a firing mechanism. Right. Okay. Yes. So, roughly speaking, 
This part is the tumbler, so yep. this is the hammer <coughs> that hits the end of the striker. Yeah. This is the spring that mm -hmm. pushes the tumbler upwards. And the, these are the sears. This, um, the, the front one's the intercepting sear, which yeah. would stop the tumbler from flying forwards if it went off accidentally. Mm -hmm. And the, the back one here is the main sear, which when, when lifted, releases the tumbler, and, which allows the tumbler to come forwards and yeah. again hit the striker. Yeah. So uh, how many hours does this take to make th this lock? Um, Approximately. Uh, no idea. <laughs> Days, um, weeks? Well, well, basically, to, to assemble a pair of locks properly would probably take about a week. So what have we got here? Uh, this is 12 bore side by side, which is one of a pair of 12 bore side by sides yes. that I'm currently making. Yeah. Um, they are, well, they're effectively, they're in the white, they're, they're near, near enough ready for proof. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've just been doing the sort of final shape up, which is like cutting all the balls in yeah. the, with the bead, top of the action, then cutting the bead on the bottom of the action mm -hmm. and round the sides as well, so all round in front of the lock plates. Yeah. With with a pair, the well, all, all the dimensions for each type of gun, so be it a Holland and Holland or a Purdy or a Boss, yeah. they all have their own particular shape. Yes. Um, so all the measurements are particular to this to this gun and the shape of it is as well. Um, and also with a pair, each gun has to match pretty much perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, so that takes extra time to yeah. actually get them. You know, I, I'm forever standing there measuring each part just to make sure that both guns match mm -hmm. because at the end of the day they need to be, they match weight-wise as well. Yeah. Mm. Um, with this, you can see um, the lock plates are fitted. They're actually nice fit. Yeah. When, when they're in, there shouldn't be any gaps or anything like that. They can see the inside of the the, the action with yes. the spring recess and the cocking limb, the cocking limb recess. Mm -hmm. Um so they're fitted. Then the fore end is fitted, and all the ejector work has been set up, which is not in, in the actual fore end iron now. But mm. again, the fore end iron has to fit really nicely around the knuckle, yeah. so there's no gaps. And so that as you open and close the gun, it opens and closes very smoothly. Mm -hmm. So it's a uniform sort of feeling from start to finish. Yes. And it's really important, especially on a gun of this quality. Mm. And then the the action and barrels have to fit together. Um, basically, uh, the the barrels machined down, the lumps fit yeah. perfectly into the action, so they're tight still. If they were loose, obviously you'd, you'd end up with the action rattling around all over the place. Mm -hmm. You have to have a fit in the hook, the hook to the, the cross pin which has to be perfect fit as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, that gives you your opening and closing feeling along with the way the fore end fits. Yeah. The, the action ha and the barrels have to fit on this surface here, which is called the draw. Mm -hmm. This surface is what really holds the gun together when you fire it. Yeah. This stops any the barrels moving forwards, okay, and, and really keep the barrels and the action face together as well as the bolting system. Mm -hmm. the, the, the bites for this are not broken <coughs> yet, so yes. I'll, I'll do those last thing. And then the action barrels have to fit all the way around what's called the face of the action. Yes, This has to be a perfect fit all the way around there, so it's gas tight seal, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's all done, and as you can see there. So you not only make wonderful shotguns, but I spy this little thing hiding in the corner. Yeah. Can you tell me about yeah. this? This uh, is a Farkson falling block rifle. Um, the calibre is 5.6 by 50R. I've been building it for about the last 18 years. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's it's, a, it's a, like a project. Yeah. Um, it's fairly close to completion now. It just needs the uh, sights put on and then engraving and hardening. Mm -hmm. Um but it's getting there. Uh, but it's a nice little thing, and I think I think for for shooting row and foxes and yeah things like that, it's a bit of a toy. Um, but it, it handles quite well. It's nice and light. You could carry it all day long. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Nice. And what yeah. what what does that weigh about? Four. Uh, it weighs about five pounds, I think. It's five it? pounds, is it? Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Which I think is just a, a nice weight. It's not mm. too light. No. You know, you can still carry it, but it's, I mean, with that caliber, it's not going to kick you too hard. No. Um, it's just a nice little thing, really. Everybody loves it. I'm very pleased with the way that it's come out. Yeah, stunning. And you've also got a, a big boomer hidden away. Double the, rifle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, so well, let's, nice. let's go and have a look at that one then. All oh, right, okay, if you want to. Yeah. yeah. So this is quite a big boomer, isn't it? It's, as well, as far as double rifles go, it's not a huge one, but it's a fair size. Yeah. So this is a 450, 400 uh, WJ Jeffrey box up rifle. Double mm -hmm. rifle. Mm -hmm. They're double rifles because they were used for generally shooting fairly dangerous game. Yeah. Um, so you have two instant shots rather than with a bolt action rifle. You have to cycle it before yeah. you can take your next shot. Mm -hmm. um, so you just you had it there for safety. Um, and also they, they used to shoot them at quite close range as mm -hmm. well. They're not. You, know, you wouldn't you wouldn't take two or three hundred yard shots with no. one of these. No. It'd be more like fifty yards or something. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, quite a nice rifle. I think it's about nineteen ten. Um, it's been a bit old and worn, but it's you know beautiful shape. Mm -hmm. It's a box lock, which means the all the working mechanisms inside the action rather yep. than in <coughs> yes. lock plates on yep. the side. Mm. Um, as you can see, no cheap piece, mm -hmm. which is the way these rifles were made. They never had scopes on. They don't need scopes. Yeah. Um, and they've got the, the leaf sights here for yeah, you. Yeah, express sights. Oh. That's it. I think that goes up to what, about 200 yards or something. Up to 200 yards, yeah. You'd be very unlikely to take a shot at that. Yeah. But, I mean, this this rifle, you know, not a big double rifle, but it still stop a fairly large animal. Mm -hmm. you know, mm. you know, the, the bullet weight's, you know, it's got fairly considerable bullet weight and quite a lot of energy behind it. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, these, as a, as a 450-400, is actually an obsolete round, although you can still buy it. And mm -hmm. the rifle in this calibre, you don't actually have to have it on a license. Okay. No, right. only if you're going to shoot it. Right. Otherwise, you can have it as a collector's, collector's piece. Right, yeah. But yeah. no, this is a this is a really nice one. As you can see, it's got doll's head extension. Mm -hmm. And then just standard, normal double double bite lock up on underneath the, uh, on the you know, on the lumps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, that's all I've got. It weighs ten so pound, exactly off. spot on ten pound. That's big, and it handles it handles yeah. like a shotgun. Oh, it handles like an absolute dream. Yeah. 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 So if you had Mister Leopard or Tiger yeah, yeah, coming yeah. at you, you're gonna be yeah. just on them. On Incredible. Yeah. So they they made them so well in those days. They actually yeah. they knew everything that they they needed to. You know, there's the, you can't really improve on these older rifles. Mm. The, 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 all, all the experiments and everything had been done by this time. They yeah. knew exactly what they wanted. Mm -hmm. They knew exactly mm -hmm. how to make it work. Yeah. You know, you, you absolutely cannot improve it at all. 